This is my little perennial border and on the other side of the, um, this is Itia, on the other side there's a fence. The other side of the fence we have our back patio and our dog comes out. So this is where I put my, uh, my more showy perennials uh, or that's just the way that the garden ended up. And I really enjoy that. But before we do that, I just want to show you over here. I don't know if I ever planted columbine out here, but check this columbine out. You know, for years, there have been a few seedlings back here. And last year, I made it a point to go through and weed around this columbine. And it just, this is the first year I've really seen it just go nuts. And I, again, I don't know if I planted one and it's self-sowed. You know, it's been a while, and, and these guys have just been kind of like, they've been growing but not thriving. But with all the rain we had this year, uh, these plants have taken off, and I finally got some mulch. I remember last year I actually had to weed around the plant by hand when I was weeding because I couldn't use a hoe. So I just, uh, I just, you know, this is one of those little garden treasures that uh, wasn't planned but I think it looks awesome and, and you know at some point I want to put some vegetables in this part of the yard. This is going to be my future uh, vegetable garden but I, I just you know I really enjoy the surprises in the garden uh, or, and the things that weren't really planned that, that come out nice. Uh, this here is a Juga chocolate chip. I brought some back from a customer's house. Uh, it's just coming out of bloom. Um, but this part of the garden, you know, there was another video I made where I said that every garden I do ends up having a color theme. I don't really consciously do it, but it just happens. And this here would be my, my purple garden or my lav lavender garden. Over here, we've got purple coneflower, which I really enjoy, and I'll use it more than like a black-eyed Susan, because black-eyed Susan, it just forms a carpet in the garden and takes over everything. And then over here I've got some uh, liatris, and this is probably kobold, and that's going to bloom uh, later in the year, probably another month, so what is it now? It's, it's late May, early June, so probably by mid to late June we'll have our kobolds coming into bloom. Uh, I just moved these poppies from over where the vegetable garden was, and I also moved this giant, uh, this is Clethra berbervensis, uh, which is just getting its blooms. And this, this is a white bloom, but if you take a look here, uh, that's Clethra berbervensis. And the birds, you know, we got the feeders over here. The birds love to land on the Clethra and then go to the feeder. And then I did put, um, we got a peony over there, which I transplanted. It's pink, and boy, they take a while to recover when you transplant them. And at the back of the garden here, I've got some Baptisia australis which I think I put in about two years ago. It, it's still going to thicken up quite a bit, but I really like that, that purple bloom. It's like a shrub. Um, nice look in the garden. And then here I've got uh, Centauria Montana. Again, it's late May. The Centauria Montana is coming into bloom, purple bloom. Uh, some more poppies, which I don't think those are purple. And then I've got uh, Stokes Aster, Stokesia lavis over here as well. And then we're going to move up to uh, Meadow Rue in the back of the garden. Spirea, I don't remember. I think this is probably Magic Carpet Spirea. And then, you know, continuing on, we've got um, Simisifuga here. I don't remember which one. It's one of the purple leafed ones. And then I was actually at the garden, uh, a garden center this year, and I picked up some epimedium, which is supposed to do good in dry shade. So I, you know, I'm trying to kind of fill in, for lack of a better term, the back of this garden. I need one more ground cover, ground cover, perennial, more perennial than ground cover. I prefer clumping things uh, as opposed to ground covers, except where I truly need a ground cover but I need something to put around the base of this uh, hydrangea here to kind of fill in the middle. And I don't know what it's gonna be yet, um, but hopefully we'll figure that one out. And then we've got uh, two plants, which I should know what they are. Uh, 
Uh, we're in the shade of maple trees. You know, you take a look over here. We got two maples, sugar maples, and uh, they totally, totally went uh, out of my mind. But both of these plants, uh, they're not huge performers, but for dry shade, they, they give me just what I need. Yeah.